This particular slide talks about the calculation of heat transfer coefficient and that is mentioned in section 5.2.4 of ISO 7547 2022. Well, this is very important factor because this formula gives you the heat transfer coefficient of uh, the marine structure. As I already told that formula is not uh, much of a difference except few couple of additional factors and we need to understand that it's different than the building sector as you know building center bricks mortars are used but in marine sector there are no bricks there are no mortars what you have is a steel plates and insulation on top of it so uh, this is very very uh, clear from this you need to understand that uh, it is quite different than the building structure altogether now what different it is that is what we are going to see over here if you see the formula it is clearly written and you can note down the formula or you can remember while going for the interview it is uh, clearly stated here what formula it is and not only that there is a calculation also given at the bottom how the value of the heat transfer coefficient is arrived at that is you know a coefficient of heat transfer surface is wind coefficient and what are the normal values as per ISO 7547 is also clearly over given for it. and more or less it doesn't change and we have already seen uh, we are going to see in future what typical uh, heat transfer coefficient we can assume at the earlier stage and to proceed with the calculation unless you go to the EPC stage so these are some of the formulas which you need to remember and by heart and you need to apply uh, in your life uh, when you are calculating for the marine oil and gas HVAC installations so especially this is what the formula uh, we follow and if all values are given over here you can change it suppose the panel thickness is 50 mm you can just add, add the 50 mm thickness and you can go ahead the ins thermal insulation whatever it is you can put the value and you can go ahead so this is how the example is also given so you can go through as a being an engineer you can easily understand what I, what this example calls for so we can just go through it and uh, understand what I mean as I have already explained uh, the heat transfer coefficient in section 5.2.4 the formula is given but many of the spaces when you start the work and you don't have the proper value because you have not placed the purchase orders yet so you have to do the calculation at the beginning so for the there are some factors which are already being given by the standard itself so you can safely use them without any harm even if at the latter stage this value becomes slightly lower these are already on conservative slide so anyway this uh, value afterwards even if, if it becomes lower it doesn't significantly impact your heat load calculations so these values you can very very safely use and i will read out each value against what that is weather deck not exposed to sun radiation and ship inside the external bulkheads is 0.9 which is not exposed to the external bulkhead you can take a 0.9 watt per meter square kelvin the deck and the bulkhead against the engine room and cargo spaces you can go for 0.8 the deck and the bulkhead deck is nothing but a roof and bulkhead is nothing but a wall the deck and bulkhead against the boiler room is 0.7 deck against the open weather deck you know, and exposed to sun radiation and against the hot tank is 0.6 side scuttle rectangular windows 6.5 Side cutters, rectangular window, double glazing. Normally, double glazing is used, so you can safely go for 3.5. Single glazing nowadays nobody is using. So, bulkhead against alleyway and alleyway and non sound reducing. Alleyway is nothing but your uh, passage. So, you can go for here 2.5. Bulkhead against the alleyway sound reducing is 0.9. You, got, you simply go for 2.5 here for the safer side, it doesn't matter. And hardly there is any alleyway which is uh, adjacent to the non-air condition non-air condition area. Normally, passage itself is air conditioned, so normally this situation never arises. But still, in case the control room bulkhead uh, ceiling against the engine room is uh, 0.8, control room floor against the engine room is 1.2, window triple glazing is 2.5. So these are the values uh, which are given, and we can you can safely use uh, for your heat load calculation when you have to put the value for the heat transfer coefficient in your HAP or E20 form whichever it is so these are the values which you need to use so you can arrive at the uh, arrive at these values arrive at the heat load calculation one of the important factors so this is what all about the heat transfer coefficient the formula is already explained in my previous video 
but if you don't have the data for the architecture data then you can safely go for these values now let's go for the next slide and see what's inside again this is one of the tables for uh, the iso 7547 uh, thermal insolence value it talks about the air gas and thermal insolence of each of the cases which is boundaries surfaces of air gaps so it talks about the surfaces and the respective air gaps and it gives the value of the air gap thickness suppose area of 55 mm the thermal insolence value is this much so whatever the air gap it is based on that you can arrive at the values so this is the purpose of this and uh, all the uh, if you can see the nodes over here you can clearly see the purpose of these nodes over here so what are these nodes you will understand clearly so just go through these nodes you will understand the purpose of uh, the see, aluminum foil and other polished surfaces as and it's very straightforward so it is nothing too much to explain so these values you can use for the thermal insolence for the respective air gaps for solar heat gain calculations section 5.3 has given this formula uh, it is a common formula but still it is applicable to the marine industry also and this formula talks about how to calculate the solar heat gains so as you can see in this formula which is clearly written uh, what is what and k is what age is what and gs all these factors are already given so just go through this being an engineer you can easily understand what it formula all about you can just put these values in the formula and you can arrive at the solar heat gain calculations very very easily so there is nothing much to elaborate being an engineer you are already aware of this heat load calculation so you know this formula is all about and not only that all guidance also is given here that in excess of temperature above say 35 degrees celsius then what are the values of the delta t r to be considered that also is already been given so again no need to hesitate over here to use these values again here also if you can see the gs that is heat gain per square meter of glass surface also is mentioned over here so what gs how much value for the clear gas and what is the interior shading is to be considered normally go for the 350 being a conservative one and also it is mentioned that surface is not included in av because the shadow from overhanging that means the solar angle of 45 degrees so all everything is clearly been mentioned just put your values and arrive at the solar gain calculations particular slide talks about the heat gain from the persons as per iso 7547 latest version these are the values considered for the uh, heat gain from the people so as you can see seat at rest and the light work there are various other values like sensible light and heat as typically used for the ashtray values they are not different values so for these values these are the values you need to refer uh, for the calculations while you are calculating the uh, heat generation or heat gain from the persons on board so here also total value in table 4 generally same as 24 degrees celsius and uh, as you could see earlier I was talking about 27 degrees Celsius. So it is mentioned here even if you design to 24 degrees Celsius, these values are not going to change. And heat values for the female should be taken 85% of the listed values, and heat emission will increase proportionately based on increasing developed activity and work level. So if you go going for sensible and light work, these are the values, and you can suppose it's a heavy work, then you can increase these values proportionately. That's what this standard is allowing you to do. So that's the basis of course I told that basis is very important for oil and gas marine sector because it's linked with the insurance of the vessel or insurance of the ship or structure. So you are safe in your job so if something happens in future you are safe. So you can say that this is what the calculation is, it is approved and you are safe. Again and again I am repeating to show the importance of the basis of calculations. So again these values you can use in the E20 form or, or the HAP form whichever it is. To arrive at the calculation anyway we will be taking a case study to uh, see how it works and case study of the entire project uh, in, in at the end of the module at the end of the code so definitely you will uh, have some idea about it so let's go to the next that talks about the heat gain from lighting and other sources it is elaborated illustrated in section 5.5 the heat gain uh, from the general lighting as per table 4 or 5 is described over here. 
the heat gain from the lightings values are also mentioned for cabins how much it should be for incandescent fluorescent led the mess for the dining room or gymnasium i always suggest to go for the incandescent one because being a safer site while calculating your design heat load calculations and then later on you can take a diversity of 20% on the entire load that becomes a fair approach to arrive at the proper heat load calculation and the optimum one as you know that if you over design the system the system efficiency comes down so we have to design the system in a way that it serves the purpose at the rate of also it should be energy efficient also so uh, i suggest to go for the incandescent value that is 15 20 40 and uh, just design your system accordingly yeah of course initially it will be a load would be if you find that okay sir the load is bit different and a little bit higher but if you see that in the cabin at the floor in this incandescent talking about 15 and fluorescent talking about 8 gymnasiums is only one gymnasium mess dining room is only one but rest all other areas you can use 15 and believe me there's no not much hard, well, hard difference very high difference you won't find in lighting load and you can take a diversity as explained earlier and you can close the matter and refrigerator output if if the refrigerators are shown in the in the galley or the kitchen or whichever room you can take 0.3 watt per liter storage capacity unless and otherwise specified by the purchaser for safer side you can take suppose you have 100 liters of fridge so you can just dip, uh, uh, this uh, value 0.3 to 100 is 30 watts so you can add the 30 watts as a equipment load uh, for the refrigerator and for the temporary electrical appliances such as the television radio set boiler you can be ignored as is clearly mentioned over here the heat gain from equipment etc in radio cabin shall be taken as 2.5 kilowatt its radio room is there equipment you can get 2.5 kilowatt as the heat dissipated from the equipment it's clearly mentioned over here one more important factor is heat gain from the fans shall be taken uh, to give the rise of the temperature of the air to 1 degree celsius Uh, per kpa of the total pressure rise the rise in temperature of the air in the ducts should be limited to 1.5 degrees celsius in supply air duct and 2 degrees celsius in return air duct so this is also very important you can check uh, you can see uh, the heat gain from the fans should be taken as 1 degree at uh, 250 kpa so this is also very very common uh, and if you see in marine oil and gas offshore sector crossing 1000 pascal is very common sometimes uh, we have installed the fans Which should 2,500 pascals. So 2,500 pascals is 2.5 kPa. So 2.5 kPa multiplied by one is 2.5 degrees Celsius rise uh, for the air temperature can be taken over here. And similarly, if this value is not available, you can take the limit of 1.5 degrees Celsius rise. So you suppose your ADP apparatus dew point and uh, the value you will get anyways from the uh, heat load calculations that what will be a supply temperature over there. So supply temperature you need to add this value also. So you will remember that at the end when it reaches the room, how much is the increase in temperature. So you need to accordingly design your coil size to adjust this particular delta T to match your room inside conditions. Because your room supply temperature is going to be about around 14 degrees Celsius. In your room room temperature you have to maintain 24 degrees Celsius. So 14 degrees Celsius of supply air is entering inside the room. it is getting uh, heat is getting picked up it reaches to 24 and again it is back goes back to the duct so this is how the guidelines are given and you need which you can follow and apply for your heat load calculations to get the proper results uh, and uh, make it uh, more closer to the reality let's go to the next slide as you could clearly see over here there is an in annexure a there are guidance and good practices are provided in the design ventilation air conditioning system of the ships so section a.2 talks about the supply air in hospital non return flap should be installed in supply air duct that means that suppose we are providing a duct in the hospital section or in the medic room there should be a non return damper over that because no uh, suppose suppose in case of the suppose in case that supply air duct is not supplying any air suppose air should shut down so no contamination should pass back from the duct back to the other rooms so that's the purpose of this particular non return damper section a point it talks about the exhaust air in laundries and drying rooms exhaust air devices should be installed over areas with high emission and high humidity that means suppose the duct is going it should uh, the hood should come or the connection should happen exactly at the dryer where the high heat emission is there 
so heat is being properly collected and picked up and being taken care of section a.4 talks about the air movement in occupied areas the normal applications of human comfort the occupied areas are geometrically limited to 0.15 from all the room surfaces with the height of 1.8 mm above this means that uh, air movement should happen in a way that height of the floor should be considered as a 1.8 mm okay and geometrically it should be limited to 1.5 mm from all the room surfaces that means it should be considered as your zone which you need to cool or condition is of 6 meter high uh, or uh, it's not 6 meter height 6 foot high that is, uh, is 1.8 meter and the zone it is just at, uh, from the wall it is uh, 150 mm away from each wall so that is the zone which you need to cool. Uh, the section 4.5 talks about the temperature variation in occupied areas. The maximum difference in temperature variation across any point within the occupied should not exceed maximum 2 Kelvin. This means that suppose you are standing in one corner of the room and you are checking the temperature of that particular zone. And suppose you just go some 10, uh, 10 feet away in the same room and suppose you are checking the temperature of that particular space then the difference between these two temperatures should not be more than 2 degrees celsius or 2 degree kelvin whatever so suppose i'm suppose i'm standing in the room i'm getting 24 degrees celsius so, so, so suppose i'm standing on the opposite side of the room there i will get the 26 degrees celsius so that is fine but any suppose if i'm getting 28 degrees celsius then it's serious that means there's a serious air distribution problem inside the room so we need to be very very careful while uh, designing the air distribution system also in a way that it should be in a way uniform but should not exceed more than uh, 2 degree Kelvin or 2 degree Celsius. Hope this is very very clear and these are the good engineering practices which we can follow for the ships. Let's go to the next slide. As uh, you can clearly see over here the refrigerating machinery that calls about section A.6. It talks about sea water system and the size of the condenser should be based on the inlet water temperature of plus 32 degree, plus 32 degrees Celsius for the system up to 7.5 kilowatt. The maximum uh, the compressor motor selected should be the next size up for the worldwide applications. It means that you know for so for suppose uh, your sea water condenser, whatever you are designing for or the inlet temperature of the water, whatever you are considering, should be considered at 32 degrees Celsius. Uh, up for a system up to 7.5 it means uh, suppose your motor kilowatt is coming up to 7.5 then go for the next one that is 10 kilowatt for a safer side so suppose any heavy duty comes uh, your motor should be capable to withstand it that is what its guideline clearly says then for the systems larger than 7.5 kilowatt the compressor motor should be capable of driving the compressor at the inlet water temperature of 35 degrees celsius or alternatively have a fixed overload capacity in percentage corresponding to, uh, to the inlet water temperature increase from 20, 32 degree to 35 degree Celsius and some commonly occurring evaporation temperature. So this is also a very very important factor which you need to consider while selection of the equipment. And for indirect cooling system the condenser should be designed for 36 degree Celsius on inlet cooling water temperature and compressor should motor should be at the 38 degrees celsius this is also one important factor why we are selecting the motors or the condensers which is to have which has an indirect cooling system while calculating the total heat transfer of the condenser the following factor of 0 0.00009 meter square kelvin per watt should be used the following factor for the uh, Close chill water system should be half of the seawater falling factor in the condenser. This is also very very important uh, uh, question in always they ask in the interview. So you should be prepared for it. That was the falling factor of the condenser to be considered. Then uh, when circulating the cooling effect, the mass of the air should be considered. The 1.2 should be used. Why it is mentioned that you know when the cooling while air conditioning, this is always a common question that you know. Uh, if the air is cooled and definitely the density will be less or specific mass of the air will be less the uh, so more or suppose it's a hot air and definitely specific uh, air of this will be less as you know the density of the air you know, as as it, we heat up the air the density of the air reduces and becomes hot and goes up but the moment if you cool it the density of the air is increased and it settles down 
so this is the reason it says that for uniformity and for calculation purpose take the common uh, specific mass of the air that is 1.2 mm whether it is cool or hot or whatever go for the 1.2 mm that's the meaning of it as in the other aspects stated uh, for the initial a there are few things which i would like to here elaborate and first is regarding the sound uh, for ships uh, subject to the solar solar is nothing but this is also very important so the safety of safety of life at sea that is solar safety of life at sea this is also very common question it has been asked in the interview so this is solar so uh, as subject to the solar convention this is also very very important and mandatory convention for all the ships across the world they have to follow it like it or not so so the, the code on the noise level on board ships 2014 edition resolution xyz becomes mandatory on from 1st of uh, july 2014 the chapter 4 the code states the maximum acceptable sound pressure uh, per type of the space chapter 6 of the code states that acceptable weightage index uh, is also uh, clearly mentioned as 1 meter from the air terminal device should not exceed a 55 db this is now a mandatory requirement so you need to mug it up while going for the interview 55 dba should not the sound level should not exceed beyond 55 dba uh, when you measure it the sound from the 1 meter from the air terminal device the temperature control also it states clearly the individual temperature control should be fitted on each accommodation space this should be obtained in several ways such as controlling the airflow thermostatic expansion valve three way regulating valve and so on and other valves it is clear accommodation space is not cabin accommodation space is in its zone which you want to cool or condition condition so all it says that all controls your three way valves everything should be the part of uh, this particular uh, requirement then is all about talks about the humidification in the winter the humidification in on the winter also has specifically said that with humidification during winter it is strongly recommended that the upper level of humidification to be limited to 40% uh, relative humidity and uh, that the humidification be also controlled it means that 40% humidity is a set limit we need to make set and we need to apply the humidifier requirement during the winter so formation of ice on installation should be considered while fitting the surface all these requirements are clearly mentioned which you can read but in short when you are selecting the humidifier you need to calculate based on the 40 degree relative humidity hope it's clear here if you see the annexure b talks about the thermal conductivities of commonly used construction materials over here clearly it is mentioned that aluminum mild steel window glasses everything if you see over here it is clearly mentioned over here uh, so we can you can use over here all these things these values can be clearly used wherever you have to use a the thermal conductivity of commonly con used construction materials so this is the table which you want to refer you can refer here annexure c talks about the special considerations for mechanical control rooms and annexure c if you see it's clearly mentioned section c.1.2 occupancy number of persons to be allowed in the machinery control room should be 3 unless and otherwise stated by the purchaser that means when you are doing the heat load calculation for the machinery room or a machinery control room it should not exceed more than 3 people and total specific uh, total heat transfer coefficients of the control machinery control rooms also are clearly given over here you can use that while heat load calculation that u values specifically we call about the control room bulkheads and ceiling against the engine room should be taken as the point 8 then the control room floor against the engine room is 1.2 then windows triple glazing value is to consider 2.5 so these are the values you can consider uh, while calculating the heat load then section c.2.3 talks about the heat gain from lighting and other sources it talks about that heat gain uh, in the control room basically mechanical control room in the ship uh, can be taken as 10 watt per meter square for the lighting and you can put this value in the heat load calculation similarly for uh, this uh, heat gain from the equipment should be considered as 7 kilowatt 
so wherever the values are not specified by the vendor we can go for the 7 kilowatt value and you can start the heat load calculations over there no need to uh, assume anything because uh, 7 kilowatt has already been mentioned so you are on the safer side you can clearly mention that 7 kilowatt value is not from the vendor yet so 7 kilowatt as per ISO 7547 is been applied over here so you are safer from the calculations and you can you don't have to wait or stop for anyone or for the calculation purpose there are some special considerations for the wheelhouse as per NHRD as I explained earlier wheelhouse is nothing but uh, your deck deck is nothing but your topmost level where your captain is navigating the entire ship and giving the instructions by sitting there so this is also very very important and the heart of the ship because captain is navigating everything and all the controls are there and and one command he can find everything so if you see in annexure d section d.1 heat transfer coefficient shall be 0.5 watt per square meter kelvin then section d.1.2 is occupancy number of persons to be allowed for the wheelhouse shall be 5 this occupancy has to be 5 then the heat gain from the lighting and other sources heat gain uh, in the wheelhouse has to be ignored the reason is that because the wheelhouse has lot of uh, glasses so that captain can see through so lighting load is reduced because you have a lot of lights already from the sun which is coming from that particular glasses so it, it can be easily ignored where the heat gain from the equipment with operation is not specified we can take it as a 2 kilowatt over here over here so these are the various values so 2 kilowatt is the heat dissipation you can take from the control panels and what is mentioned is the air has to be positive pressure system has to be there the air has to be or system has to be the positive pressure system over here so it has to be 50 pascal to be maintained inside so this is the typical values uh, of for the wheelhouse wheelhouse will find in almost every ship because the captain or whoever is the controlling the ship has to sit over there so these are the factors while calculating the heat load you have to uh, clearly consider in the calculations to arrive at the realistic figure and i already explained why the uh, lighting load can be neglected because there is already a lot of glasses surrounding the wheelhouse so that captain can have an overall view of uh, every every places and as i explained earlier when the glasses are more definitely the solar load is going to be more so this factor anyway gets offset by the solar load let's go to the next slide as you could see here the annexure e talks about the special consideration for the dry provision rooms uh, the dry provision room is nothing but the room where you need to keep your pickles or your rice or your uh, or your wheat or your pepper whatever it is whichever doesn't need a refrigeration system you can consider here in the dry provision rooms so what is dry provision room all about is it has to be uh, it is a part of the ship and as i explained earlier these are the things you can keep in the dry provision store this is very important because this is related to the food so it should not get spoiled because otherwise uh, the crew which is on the ship they will not get proper food so dry provision room it clearly mentioned that it should be dry cool ventilated that means the air conditioning has to be provided in this particular room and it has to be dry cold ventilated air supply to the room should be diffused in order to avoid excessive drying of the stores exposed to the direct jet of an air relatively high speed even distribution of air throughout the room should be arranged and ducts serving to this particular room should be adequately adequately rat proofed stated by the purchaser rat proof you know the food is there rat is there normally in marine this situation never arises but by chance suppose you are onboarded to a particular port and suppose the rat enters through that then your duct should be the rat proof otherwise rat will go everywhere in the ship through the ducts so it has to be rat proof then uh, section a.1.4 talks about the outdoor air the minimum air quantity should not be uh, less than 50 percent of the total air this you need to consider very very carefully and this question often asked in interview about what is the specific about a dry provision room so don't forget about this rat proof and 50 percent of the total air supply the number of occupancy you can take as a one even if you take it as zero it doesn't matter matter much but take it as a one as specified and uh, if you see the supply airflow quantification the supply airflow in the dry provision, uh, provision room uh, shall be calculated based on the following one 
it should be either six year changes per person or 0 0.008 meter cube per person. Obviously, six year changes will be always higher. So just go for the six year changes over here, and uh, you will be arriving at the required design of the dry provision store. So if you see in dry provision, occupancy covered, outdoor air flow is covered, supply air flow is covered. There is no heat dissipating equipment inside. So you can simply neglect it. So everything is covered. So you can put these values and arrive at the uh, heat load calculation for this particular room. With this, we are coming to end of this module ISO 7547. In this model, as I explained earlier, was more mostly was all focused on the marine that is ships and uh, air conditioning uh, guidance or the standard related to the ships. What are the air changes to be considered? U values to be considered? Occupancy to be considered? And how many people per square meter to be considered, uh, how, how to arrive at the fresh air flow, how to arrive at the exhaust flow, how many air changes we need to consider, then how uh, the U value we can arrive at, how the solar load we have to arrive at, and how what is the supplier temperature we need to consider, what is the kilowatt heat dissipation we need to consider, what is the motor kilowatt rating we need to consider, what are the general guidelines we need to consider, what, is, what are the safety things we need to consider? There's a lot of lot of things we have already considered in this uh, huge huge uh, module. So definitely it's useful. You need to remember all those values because it's a part of. Uh, uh, it's going to be a part of your interview. Your part of going to be a selection. So you need to be very very careful while deciding selecting all these values when putting it to the heat load applications. It gives you more confidence. As I already told that such material is not available on internet. So just make use of everything. Uh, very limited resources regarding marine oil and gas are available on the internet. So I am one of them. So just take this opportunity, ask me questions what you have, and uh, just ask me any questions what you have, and I'll be very, very, very glad to reply your questions. So just see you on the other side, and I wish I wish to see you very, very successful in this field. In the subsequent models we are going to cover about the offshore platforms which is very interesting very very interesting you will absolutely blow with the information what i'm going to share you so uh, this is one of a kind course so just be the part of it part of the journey and i've already explained to you that oil and gas or marine engineers they almost earn 10 times of the normal hvac engineers yeah believe me we earn almost 10 times of the normal hvac engineers like if i if i'm doing consultancy now i'm earning enough money huge money so just take an opportunity to learn be one of a kind go to the places go to the world because this by this you can go to gulf you can go to middle east you can go to southeast of america there are a lot of opportunities everywhere available there is a shortage of people so take an opportunity just jump into this field and focus it and you can make a bright career out of it wish you very good luck and just be with me for the next models also Thank you.